The entire world is worried. And if it isn't, then it should be, because nuclear weapons could fly any day now. This all begins with the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, who has repeatedly threatened to use nuclear weapons in its war with Ukraine if the war didn't go to Russia's favor, or if third-party countries got involved. Well, according to reports, the war isn't going in Russia's favor, in large part because third-party NATO countries got involved. With Putin's nuclear threat checklist now checked, NATO forces are training on the use of nuclear weapons. And according to U.S. President Joe Biden, the risk of nuclear Armageddon is at its highest level in 60 years. And it's no news that a nuclear Armageddon is the one event that can destroy the world as we know it, thanks to the destructive power born from how nuclear weapons work. Briefly, we become scientists for a minute. It all boils down to the atoms. At the center of every atom is a core called the nucleus, which is composed of closely bound protons and neutrons. While the number of protons is unique to each element in the periodic table, the number of neutrons can vary. As a result, there are multiple species of some elements, known as isotopes. These isotopes can be stable or unstable. Unstable atoms do long to be stable, though, and in their attempt to achieve that status, they must shed their excess neutrons as it is what makes them unstable. Shedding these excess neutrons is accompanied by a ferocious energy release. This energy is where nuclear weapons get their explosivity from, although there could be additional energy sources with each nuclear weapon to increase their destructive power. Like in the case of the Tsar Bomba, which to this day remains the most powerful nuclear weapon ever created. Created by the Soviet Union, now mainly Russia, the scary power of the Tsar Bomba was tested on October 24, 1961. 8 meters long, 2.1 meters wide, and 60,000 pounds heavy, the Tsar Bomba was dropped by parachute from a 295V aircraft. The bomb detonated autonomously 13,000 feet above the ground, releasing 50 megatons of explosive destruction across over 70 miles of land. To date, no nuclear weapon tested has proven to be even half as powerful. The Tsar Bomba was a testament to the nuclear might of Moscow, which is why it is impossible to ignore Russia's nuclear threats today. In addition to Putin's verbal threats, some events have caused worry across the international community regarding the likelihood of seeing Russian nuclear weapons fired at Ukraine. One such event is the liberation from Russian control of annexed regions of Ukraine. On September 30th, Russia announced that it had annexed four regions of Ukraine, Luhansk, Donetsk, Zaporizhia, and Kherson, with plans to make them officially part of Russia. However, Russian forces are currently being forced to retreat in at least two of those regions, as Ukrainian forces continue to advance. Russia has no plans to let go of these territories, and the question remains as to how far Putin would go to ensure that. Nuclear weapons, maybe? Observers have noticed some indications of nuclear-related activity inside Russia. On October 3rd, The Telegraph reported a train was spotted with armored vehicles belonging to the 12th Main Directorate of the Russian Ministry of Defense, which is responsible for the physical security of Russia's nuclear weapons. The vehicles are typically assigned to units protecting nuclear weapons in the field. Four 2160 Blackjack bombers and three 295 Bear bombers have also reportedly been spotted at Alenia Air Base in northern Russia after they arrived sometime in late September. All seven of these bombers are capable of launching nuclear weapons. A report in Italy's La Repubblica newspaper then says Russia may be close to a live test of its 100-ton torpedo, called Poseidon, which is big news. The Poseidon torpedo is one of a slew of new weapons introduced by Russian President Vladimir Putin. The torpedo is an autonomous weapon system, meaning it can navigate to its target on its own without external control. It travels at a speed of 70 knots or higher and can dive to depths of up to 3,280 feet, farther than NATO submarines and their torpedoes can dive. It has a nuclear propulsion system that gives it virtually unlimited range while being armed with a 2-megaton nuclear warhead. That's 125 times more powerful than the 16-kiloton Little Boy bomb dropped on Hiroshima. With such destructive power, relatively high speed for a torpedo, and the ability to dive to invisible depths, Poseidon is difficult, if not impossible, to intercept. 
such a weapon fired at Ukraine, or the seven bombers spotted at Olenya Air Base delivering nuclear weapons into Ukraine would be disastrous for Ukraine. But it could also be disastrous for Russia, because NATO might be left with no choice but to respond with some nukes of their own flying into Russia. Of the NATO member states, five states, Belgium, Germany, Italy, Netherlands, and Turkey, all have nuclear capabilities from NATO's nuclear sharing arrangement, with each of these countries hosting 20 American nuclear weapons in their territory and providing aircraft that will wield these weapons. France, the UK, and the US, on the other hand, are all considered the main nuclear powers. France currently has a stockpile of 300 nuclear warheads, down from a peak of 540 warheads. Combined, France's strategic arsenal has a destructive power of 51.6 megatons, more than that of the Tsar Bomba. France is one of the five recognized powers that signed the Nuclear Proliferation Treaty, alongside Russia, China, the UK, and the US. The treaty encouraged the retirement of most of the world's nuclear warheads, up to 90% of nuclear warheads in the case of the US. The UK is another of these five recognized powers. The country currently has a stockpile of 225 warheads, down from a peak stockpile of 520 warheads. The farthest flying of the current warheads can fly as far as 7,500 miles, just shy of the diameter of the planet. The U.S. is the third recognized NATO power in the treaty and by far the largest nuclear state in NATO. In fact, the U.S. was the first country to manufacture nuclear weapons and is the only country to have used them in combat, referring to the Little Boy and Fat Man bombs which were used in the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945 to bring a destructive end to World War II. The U.S. government has spent at least $10.1 trillion in present-day money on nuclear weapons. This would, among other things, fund 1,054 nuclear tests between 1945 and 1992. The largest of these tests happened on March 1, 1954, when a hydrogen bomb named Castle Bravo was deployed. The bomb produced a yield that changed the weather and exceeded even the calculation of American scientists. 15 megatons. The U.S. has since made a more powerful B-41 bomb with a yield of 25 megatons. At the peak of American nuclear power, the country had 70,000 nuclear warheads, far more than the peak of all other nuclear states combined. However, due to the Nuclear Proliferation Treaty, the U.S. has cut down on its stockpile and now has 5,428 nuclear warheads, 1,644 of which are deployed and prepared to be fired. To have personnel prepared too, the U.S. and NATO as a whole have commenced a two-week exercise designed to enhance crew handling of nuclear bombs. This exercise, involving 14 countries and up to 60 aircraft, is tagged Steadfast Noon. Steadfast Noon began on October 17th and runs until October 30th. And although NATO claims the exercise is not linked to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, as it is only an annual recurring training activity, the question still remains, could there be a nuclear war? With NATO jets flying in steadfast noon and Russian nuclear threats flying every time Ukraine makes some progress in repelling Russian forces, it is easy to expect nuclear flying anytime soon. In fact, former U.S. Secretary of Defense William Perry, an expert on nuclear weapons and nuclear policy and someone who's met Putin many times, thinks Putin could use nuclear weapons to achieve victory and thereby ensure the survival of his, quote, regime. Many of Russia's nuclear forces are already on alert, while the U.S. and other NATO allies are stepping up monitoring of Russian military movements in an attempt to catch any signs of imminent weapons use. However, despite all of these, the chances of a nuclear war may not be as high as it seems. There's simply too much to lose, even for Russia, should a nuclear war ensue. The mutually assured destruction between Russia and NATO has been enough to keep everyone off their nuclear buttons for over 70 years and it will likely remain that way for the foreseeable future. Still, should Russia go against all odds by deciding to launch nuclear weapons and force NATO to retaliate, it's safe to say that NATO is prepared to use nuclear weapons and their forces have been training for it. This is only one of two ways to ensure that Russia stays in line though. The other is by you subscribing to this channel and giving this video a like. So kindly do so now to restore world peace. Thanks for watching.